Mike Johnston, CEO of Nautilus Minerals, nice to see you here. Thanks, Rhonda. You are basically trying to reinvent the way we approach copper mining by mining for copper on the floor of the sea. How is this going to work in terms of the mechanics of it, and why do you think it's a superior method of mining? Well, the way it'll work is that you, we just have to disaggregate material, lift it up from the sea floor onto a vessel, dewater it, and then ship it to the market in its very simplest form. Um, and what we're doing is using it, uh, technologies from the oil and gas industry, marrying those up to the mining industry. So the mining side is for the cutting of the rock, and the oil and gas is the lifting of the cuttings up into the vessel and the dewatering. So putting all those together, these days you're able to do that in a relatively tight, compact uh, vessel. Um, and what that allows us to do is go and mine materials from the seafloor, which are much higher grade than what they are on land. So we're looking at grades which are about 10 times what they are on land uh, for copper and three or four times the grade for gold. So the high grades make it a very uh, competitive operation in terms of cost, uh, and the high grades also make it a very small footprint to produce the same amount of copper that you would produce on land. So you'll get more for the minerals, so even if it costs more to mine it? Yeah, that's how the grades are much higher. So yeah, the grade for copper is 10 times what it is on average on land. So uh, it's the grade that makes the whole thing work. You know, it allows you to have a very tight, compact footprint from an environmental point of view. That's great because we have lower CO2 emissions. We have uh, almost no waste whatsoever. Unlike mining on land, they end up generally with great big waste dumps and tailings dams. Uh, we don't have either of those. So we mine the material, we ship it, and we ship it directly to China. And then once it gets into China, the, the economics in China are, are quite different to in the West. So uh, material like we have, which is very high grade, the Chinese want. Uh, they are the largest consumer of copper in the world. They account for about 40% of all the copper consumed these days is consumed by China. And that is growing. So in terms of the project itself, where are you in terms of getting Solwara up and running? Yeah. The mine will be up and running, uh, scheduled to be up and running in the first quarter of 2018. So what's dictating the timeline is the building of the vessel, which all the equipment has to then be put on and then uh, brought down from China. It's being built in China and be brought down to Papua New Guinea and we'll start mining in the first half of 2018. So in terms of prices, as we've seen with the energy industry, the price of the commodity affects what happens to producers. Is it the same with copper? If copper prices collapse, would that not be problematic for you? Uh, it, it, you've got to look at it from an industry point of view. Like with the oil and gas industry, you, know, you had a lot of fringe uh, players, if you like, uh, who came in when prices were very, very high. You know, you were looking at prices over $100 a barrel, which encouraged a lot of people to come in, a lot of high cost operations. The beauty of ours, as I said, is it's very high grade. That high grade translates into competitive costs. So we're not at the top of the cost curve. We're actually going to be in the midpoint of the cost curve um, from our expectations. So that puts us in a good position. So the, half the industry has to go under before it gets down to where we're looking at to positioning ourselves. So you're still in the research and development phase in terms of how your company is operating. You are posting a loss. You had a loss in the most recent quarter. When does that turn to profitability? When do you move from investment to making those sales and then having something on the uh, yeah. balance sheet there? When we're in production. So 2018 is when we start producing copper which means we start earning uh, money and making, turning a profit. So Any concerns if there's a slowdown in China, if most of your demand is expected to be from China? Uh, not really. We have a contract at the moment. We have an agreement with Tonglin. They're the largest uh, producer of copper in China. So they're going to take uh, most of our ore. Um, China has a base load of copper consumption, which it, it needs, which it requires. And the Chinese companies are actively exploring the world, looking the world to find more copper for China. So uh, if there's a slowdown, you know, it, it will affect some industries more than others. People still need houses to live in, they still want cars, they still want refrigerators and sort of things that we take for, for granted in the West. Um, you know, China's still 
the, the bulk of their population is still aspiring to get those things. So the investment will change in China. You know, it's moving from, from being uh, asset-based, you know, infrastructure-based, into consumer. And that's where the government of China wants to take it. Consumer spending is good for us, good for copper. There's a lot of copper in every car, there's a lot of copper in every fridge and in every house. And that's all good for us. Mike Johnston, thanks so much for Thank your time. You.